Hello, it's Metacosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our general chemistry quick review playlist. A playlist for busy people where we get straight to the point. The last video was about the periodic table. Today we'll talk about the periodic trends, the patterns of change in the periodic table, namely the atomic radius, the ionization energy, electron affinity, electronegativity, and even metallic character. For instance, let's talk about the atomic radius. As you go down a group, the atomic radius keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You go from this to this, because this one had only one shell. But look, here we have seven electron shells. So the trend is that the atomic radius increases down a group. And since it's a trend in the periodic table, it's called periodic trend. Please watch the videos in this chemistry quick review playlist in order. Hit the like button. If you remember my 10 commandments of chemistry, many of them included matter and energy, as well as the implications of the periodic table. Matter could be pure or could be a mixture. Pure matter could be an element or a compound. Today we're talking about the trends of the periodic table of the elements. What's an element? It's the simplest form of a substance, which is physical matter. An element is made of atoms. For example, oxygen element is made of oxygen atoms. Here is a very simplistic view of the atom. In the center, we have the nucleus. Around the nucleus, we have shells that contain electrons. Are these shells well demarcated, like drawn with a pencil? No, they are very vague, poorly demarcated. You can call them an electron cloud. Hazy, blurry, vague unclear. The nucleus is positive. Why? Because it has neutrons, which have no charge, and protons, which have positive charge. So overall, the nucleus is positive. And around it, we have a nucleus, which is negative. The positive and the negative cancel each other out, and you end up with a neutral atom. Neutrons are neutral and located in the nucleus. Protons are positive, also in the nucleus. Electrons are negative around the nucleus. The neutrons are neutral. Protons, positive. Proton, positive. Electrons, negative. Let's talk about the masses. The electron mass is so tiny, it's almost insignificant. You can ignore it. Here is the atomic mass and here is the atomic number. The atomic number is the number of protons. It's also the number of electrons. The atomic mass or the mass number, roughly speaking, is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Why isn't it a whole number? Because it's a weighted average, as we have discussed before. Number of protons equal the number of electrons, and this is called the atomic number. Since the positive charges equal the negative charges, you have a neutral atom. But what if the number of protons exceed the number of electrons? Then you have a positive ion. What if the number of the negative electrons exceed the number of positive protons? Then you have a negative ion. What if the number of protons equal the number of electrons, but the number of neutrons is different? That's an isotope, such as carbon-13, carbon-14, etc. In the last video, we talked about the periodic table. Don't forget, we go horizontally, we call them periods, or rows, or a series of elements. Number one has one energy shell. How about period number two? Well, each element has two shells of electrons. In period three, you have three shells of electrons. I said shell, not subshell. How about period number seven? It has seven shells of electrons. Next, let's go vertically. Now we call this a group or a family of element. Group one has one electron in the outermost shell, called the valence shell. Group two has two electrons. Group three, A or 13, three electrons. Group 17 or 7a, 7 electrons in the outermost shell. Group 18, the noble gases, 8 electron in the outermost shell. If you have 8 electrons in your outermost shell, you are called stable. And this is the octet rule. Octet means 8. Now let's talk about the periodic trends. First, atomic radius. Definition, atomic radius, the radius of the atom. Thank you, Captain Genius. And of course, the radius is half the diameter. So the radius is from the center 
to the outermost part, i.e. it's the distance between the nucleus of the atom and the edge of the atom. Is the edge of the atom clearly demarcated as if it was drawn by a sharp pencil? Heck no, it is vague. We're uncertain about the edge of the atom. It is not clearly demarcated. Therefore, there is a better definition. Here's an atom, here's another atom. Take the distance between this nucleus and this nucleus and give me half of that distance and that will be the radius of the atom. This definition is more accurate than this definition. Let's talk about the atomic radius trend down a group and across a period. First, down a group. Think about it. We went from one electron shell into seven electron shell. So, of course, this atom is way bigger than this atom. The atomic radius here is bigger than the atomic radius here. Makes perfect sense. So, as I go down a group, my atomic radius keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We're done with down a group. Now, let's talk about the atomic radius trend across a period. As I go from here to here, what do you think is going to happen? Well, let's see. I went from three protons and three electrons to four protons, four electrons, five protons, five electrons, six protons, etc., etc. So as I go from the left to the right, the number of positive uh, protons go up and the number of negative electrons go up. And as you know, opposites attract, which means on the left, the attraction between the positive and the negative is weak. But as you go to the right, because you're adding more protons and more electrons, you're adding more positive charges and more negative charges, you're adding more attraction forces, which means the atom will get smaller and smaller and smaller because the positive nucleus is attracting the negative electrons more and more and more. So you shrink and shrink and shrink. So as you go across a period, the atomic radius decreases. So atomic radius down a group, it goes up across a period, it goes down. Next, ionization energy. What the flip is that? Think about it. It's called energy. Ionization. What's an ion? Oh, an ion is something that's not neutral. Exactly. Here we're trying to remove a negative electron. When you remove a negative electron, the atom becomes a positive ion, i.e. a cation. So think of ionization energy as the energy needed to make a positive ion. It's the energy needed to remove an electron from a neutral atom in the gaseous state. Now let's think about the trend. Let's start on the upper left part of the periodic table. The atom is small, which means the outermost electron is close to the nucleus. Yes, which means the positive charge and the negative charge are attracting each other, which means it's very difficult to get that electron out of the atom because it's close enough to the positive nucleus. Conversely, as you go down, 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 down a group, look what happened here. The furthermost electron is here, which is far away from the positive nucleus, which means it's easier to remove that electron compared to that electron, i.e. by going down a group, your ionization energy decreases. The energy needed to remove an electron gets lower and lower and lower because it gets easier to remove an electron the farther it gets from the nucleus. And that was the trend of ionization energy down a group. How about across a period? Think about it. Across a period, the electron keeps getting closer and closer and closer and closer to the nucleus, which means it gets harder to remove that electron from the atom, i.e. it takes more energy, which means ionization energy goes up. Next, electron affinity has the opposite definition of ionization energy. Ionization energy was trying to remove an electron away from the atom. But look here at electron affinity. This is how easily an atom attracts and accepts an electron go away versus come closer. So the definition is the opposite. However, the trend is the same. Down a group, electron affinity decreases. Across a period, it increases, just like ionization energy. 
but I don't get it. Let's think about it. Affinity means love. Which two people love one another the most? Those who are very close to each other, i.e. a positive nucleus and a negative electron, or those who are far away from one another. Of course, these two love each other more. Perfect. So the electron affinity here is high. As you go down, electron affinity decreases. Oh, that makes sense. Moreover, when you go across a period, you keep adding more positive charges and more negative charges, so they attract one another more. They tend to love each other more on the right side than on the left side. So across a period, electron affinity increases. The fourth concept is electronegativity. As you know, electrons are negative. I want you to look at your periodic table. Let's look at sodium, for example, which is number 11. I want you also to look at chlorine, which is number 17. They are in the same row, in the same period, correct? Yes, they are. Which one has more positive charges, i.e. protons? Answer chlorine of course the one on the right side chlorine has more protons than sodium okay let's talk about electrons which one has more electrons is it sodium or chlorine answer also chlorine nice how many electrons does sodium have in the outermost shell the answer is one i said shell not subshell the configuration of sodium is two eight one two electrons in the first shell eight in the second shell, one in the third shell. How about chlorine? Chlorine has 17, so the configuration is two, eight, seven. And to achieve stability, i.e. the octet, sodium would love to lose an electron, but chlorine, the one on the right side, would love to gain another electron to become octet, to become like the noble gas argon, which means chlorine has more ability to attract an electron, therefore higher electronegativity. So across a period, electronegativity increases. Let me make it easier for you. Who's the most electronegative? Answer, fluorine. So if you're getting closer to fluorine, electronegativity goes up. Look at this, I'm going to the right. Oh, and fluorine is on the right, exactly. If you're going towards fluorine, if you're going to the most electronegative, therefore electronegativity will increase across a period. If you go up a group, you're getting closer to fluorine, so electronegativity increases. But if you're going down a group away from fluorine, away from the most electronegative, therefore electronegativity decreases. On average, smaller atoms are more electronegative than large atoms, which makes sense because if you're small, it means there is less electron shielding, i.e. less electrons are covering around the nucleus. So it is easy for you to attract an electron from the outside world. Last, metallic character. What's that? It's the quantum level reactivity of a metal. And as you know, reactivity of the metal is based on the tendency to lose electrons, which is the opposite of electronegativity, because electronegativity was about attracting an electron but metallic character is about losing an electron and since electronegativity went up as i go up and to the right therefore metallic character has to be the opposite it increases as i go down and to the left see chemistry makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about so let's summarize atomic radius down a group it increases across a period it decreases if you want ionization energy, it's the opposite. Down a group goes down. Across a period goes up. Then electron affinity is the same trend. Electronegativity, almost the same trend. Just remember, fluorine is the most electronegative. How about metallic character? The exact opposite of electronegativity. Electronegativity goes up if you go to the right and upwards. Metallic character goes up if you're going to the left and downwards. So let's draw all of this on the periodic table. First, atomic radius. If you're going downstairs, it increases. Conversely, ionization energy, electron affinity, and electronegativity decrease as you go down. Let's go across a period. Atomic radius decreases. 
However, ionization energy and electron affinity and electronegativity go up. How about metallic character? It's the opposite of electronegativity. Who's the most electronegative? Fluorine, which means as you go to the right and upwards, electronegativity goes up. Metallic character is the opposite. As you go down and to the left, metallic character increases. That's it. It's easy peasy. You can download my handwritten notes on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. Let's answer the question of the previous video. How many electrons does carbon have in its valence shell? I'm talking, of course, about a neutral atom. Please pause and try to answer this yourself. Okay, here is carbon. What's the atomic number of carbon? Six. Which means how many electrons does carbon have in total? Answer, six. Configuration based on shells, not subshells, just shells. Two. Okay, how many are left? Four so that the total is six. So the first shell has two, and then the outer shell or the valence shell has four. So the answer here is four. If you have one or two or three electron in the outermost shell, you tend to lose them to become a positive ion. But if you have five, six, or seven electron on the outermost shell, you'll tend to gain more electrons to become a negative ion. But what if you're stuck in the middle? What if you have four electron in the outermost shell? Then you will neither lose nor gain. Instead, you will share electrons, i.e. covalent bond, and you will see carbon with four bonds with hydrogen so that we are sharing four electrons. So now carbon has achieved the octet rule. And what's that? Hydrocarbon. And you will see this all over organic chemistry. Question of the day. If electronegativity of sodium is 0.93 and electronegativity of chlorine is 3.16, let me pause for a second and tell you that the electronegativity of chlorine is greater than that of sodium, which makes sense because chlorine is more to the right. Chlorine is closer to fluorine, which is the most electronegative. That's why chlorine is more electronegative. Anyway, if the electronegativity of sodium is this and chlorine is this, then the type of bond in sodium chloride is non-polar covalent, polar covalent, ionic, or metallic. Let me know your answer in the comments. You'll find the answer key in the next video. You do not want to miss the next video because we'll have more questions. Are you struggling with kidney physiology, the glomerular filtration rate, the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal tubule, the counter current multiplier, the titratable acidity of the collecting ducts? You can master these topics by downloading my renal physiology course on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com so that you can help your future patient. You can join my YouTube membership program to get instant access to more than 300 premium videos if you choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, support my channel here or here, go to my website to download my notes, courses, cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.